Hi there, I'm Paul Houle, a neurosurgeon from Cape Cod, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction into endoscopic spinal anatomy. We're very excited you're going to be attending the upcoming cadaver lab, and we wanted to give you the opportunity to see some anatomy before actually getting into the lab. We're going to start off by presuming that the working port has been introduced uh, and we're about to enter into the spinal canal with the endoscope. Initially, uh, what you'll see is a big mass of tissue, which may be disc material, it could be facet capsule, but there may also be nerve root underneath. And so one of the clinical pearls is that before you tug on anything, you squeeze with the graspers, because this will give, you, give the patient the opportunity to scream out in pain if you grab something you're not supposed to. So this is one of the advantages of doing the procedure uh, awake or under conscious sedation, but if you're going to do anything to injure the nerve root, in general, the patient will tell you. I think one of the most important things uh, in the anatomical structures to identify is the bone. Early on, it's especially easy to become disoriented, and if you know where the bone is, you'll always be able to maintain your orientation. As the orthopedic surgeons say, the bone is home. Here's a short clip identifying the bony anatomy. Up here at the 11 to 12 o'clock is what Dr. Wagner calls a Wagner arch. This is bone that's been resected. You see the pulsating epidural fat right there, and this is this stuff out here is all lateral stuff in the facet joint, facet capsule. Stop recording. I also think it's very important to identify the nerve root. In this example, you will see uh, a nerve root uh, going from the 8 to 9 o'clock position to the 12 o'clock position. You'll see how easy it is to identify this nerve root and what a great view of the relationship between the disc and the nerve root uh, is. This is an exiting L2 nerve root. This is vertebral body. There's some epidural venous bleeding that I am coagulating. And I can reach underneath the nerve root. There's an osteophyte that I need to get. But you can see very nicely the nerve root. Stop recording. You know, people often ask me if uh, this is an epidural procedure. Do you go in and internally decompress the disc? And I would tell you that the Joymax procedure is completely different. Here you have a visualization of the nerve root and its relationship to the disc space, and you can see that we are clearly epidural. And here's the short clip. The traversing nerve root is at 8 o'clock, traversing up to 12 o'clock, and we're looking to, right there is the disc space. Stop recording. So when it all comes together, uh, this can be a very rewarding procedure. In this example, this is a very large extruded fragment. At L4-5, the patient had a foot drop. The fragment itself was so large that I had to remove the endoscope and the pituitary all as one unit because it just wouldn't fit through the endoscope. And here is a two centimeter fragment. I think you're going to find that you're going to be able to incorporate this procedure into the vast majority of the discectomies that you perform. And I really look forward to teaching you how to perform this procedure when we get into the cadaver lab. Look forward to seeing you soon.